Hey folks, welcome back. I'm David Dalian and this is Earth Sky. And today we've got a special show for you, all the tips you will need for a top quality lunar eclipse experience. That's right, we have a lunar eclipse coming up uh, next week. And we're gonna give you all the information you need, who, what, where, when, why, and how. And I will later on be bringing in our voice of the night sky, Marcy Current, to give you all of the information that you need. And so let's get started, huh? Why don't we do that? Why don't we just jump right in here? What we've got coming up is a lunar eclipse. And we're gonna go here and we're gonna come all the way around here and end up right here. And we might along the way get a beautiful image like this. This is a partial eclipse from 2022 from a Earth Sky uh, reader who sent in this marvelous image. If you look down there, you can see there's a couple of people standing there in front of the moon by the trees. Pretty cool stuff. And so anyway, what we are doing is we've got a lunar eclipse coming. Every month, the moon, as you know, goes around the Earth, but only twice a year we end up with a lunar eclipse. And here's what happens. So you can see it there. It's going around and around and around. And it's getting closer to the shadow of the earth. So on the left hand side of your screen is the sun off screen. On the right in the center, there is the earth. And over there on the right, that long tube looking thing, that's earth's shadow or earth's shadow from the sun. And when it enters that, you get an umbra. You get this effect right here. Umbra is just a fancy word for a shadow. And it's going to look just like that. So, oh, doesn't want to cooperate. Here is the hard information you are going to need to enjoy this. The full lunar eclipse will be the night of March 13th and 14th. Now, that depends on where you are of 2025, obviously. Totality, these are universal times. So, 626 universal time to 732 universal time. That's the totality. That's when the entire disk of the moon will be covered by the shadow of the earth. We will have zizizi, which I'll explain later. That's a technical term for when three things are lined up in a row, astronomically speaking. The maximum eclipse will be at 0653 universal time. And down there on the bottom, I jotted in uh, the conversions. If you're on the Pacific coast, it's minus seven because we'll be after the time change. Notice those are all daylight saving times, except if you're in Europe where they don't switch over until the end, the last Sunday of March. So that's what we are doing. That's when we're going to do it. And this is who can see it. So on the left side there, you're going to see this eclipse while the, while the moon is rising early over here you're going to see on the left side in europe and and western africa there you're going to see the eclipse at moon set in the bucket there in the center in the in the shoe the entire thing start to finish will be visible for you so that includes all of north america and most of south america okay i've skipped ahead so i'm gonna bring in Marcy Curran, our voice of the night sky, because she's got some stuff to explain to you about how to get the premium best eclipse experience. Come on in, Marcy. There she is. Hi, Marcy. Hi, Dave. How are you today? I'm good. Thanks. How are you? I am doing really well. Why don't you tell us what we're looking at? What's that? Great. When, when the eclipse starts, uh, the Earth is actually just projecting its light uh, penumbral shadow across the moon. And you can tell from this image by Greg Redfriend that submitted it to our Earth Sky Community photo page. Uh, it's a very, very shuttle, su subtle, subtle shade. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is, um, it, it, the best way to describe it is like a, a cloud is kind of moving over the surface of the moon mm -hmm. and it'll kind of dim that that bright full moon and um some people can see it right away some people don't notice it till it's about half over the, the the you know projected half the shadow on the moon but you're gonna need probably clear skies um and you know if you don't detect it right away that's just kind of normal it, it's very subtle it is very subtle it is very subtle okay so moving right along so what are we looking at here Next, we're going into Oops, let's, let's, let partial me lunar eclipse. Make sure we eclipse. have plenty of time. 
Yes, this is the partial lunar eclipse. This is a video provided by Jan Curtis. And what we've got here is that umbral shadow, the dark shadow of Earth. And you can see okay. it as a curved shadow um, going across the surface of the moon. And you'll notice as it gets near totality, you're starting to see some of that crimson color show up on the moon. You sure are. Now, folks, if you remember back and you remember, you can always pause and go back later on to look at our charts and our descriptions in detail. But if you remember, the shadow has a dark center and then a lighter outside, which create two different kinds of shadows, which are the umbral the main one and the penumbral, just so we're all on the same page there. We've got to explain that jargon. Okay, so let's move on here. Now, let's see what we've got. So, okay, let's loop this guy too. Once we're into the total eclipse, uh, this is when the mm -hmm. umbral shadow is completely covering the moon. And uh, totality lasts for 66 minutes with this particular eclipse. And midway between will be the maximum when it will be in the darkest part of that umbral shadow. And during this entire eclipse, you should watch for things like how dark does it get? What color does it turn? And um, it's, it's actually kind of fascinating to watch it. Uh, it. It can vary and it can change. And there's actually mm -hmm. a scale that you can use as reference to see how dark that lunar eclipse will be. And this scale goes from zero to four. Uh, most of the eclipses I've seen in my 50 some years of observing is probably um, two and three. But in 1992, we'd had a volcanic eruption um, in Europe somewhere, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And I saw a zero. <laughs> that was really wow. amazing. It was it was kind of eerie because you you see this kind of little black shadow on the sky <laughs> and, and it was pretty much invisible. And it's, it's like going from new moon to full moon or something. Yeah, it's like that's a full moon and you can't see anything. <laughs> so, Crazy. So Big hole is, in the sky. There's a hole in the sky. It is fascinating to just it see is. the changes. And every different observer is going to have a different experience depending on where you are and what's right. in your atmosphere. So right. the color might be different for you. So when we get, you're going to want to come back and see all the all of the submitted photos we get because right. there'll be a whole host of colors. They can even be purple, can't they? Yeah, you can get a bluish tint, you know, it can just, it can vary copper, red, orange, gray, yes. brown. And you want to stick, so that's why you want to stick it out for the entire totality, because it's going to change colors, it's going to change all kinds of stuff. You ready for this next slide? You bet. Okay. Uh, as we mentioned, totality is 66 minutes. Um, both mm -hmm. of the penumbral and the partial phases are maybe about 70, 75 minutes. So bring your binoculars. Um yeah. You, you know, that, that is a long time to be sitting out watching, but of course you can tell from these images, you can see more detail on the moon if you're using binoculars, which is kind of fun to watch while you're watching um, the eclipse and it enhances the shadows and even small telescopes. You know, it's not necessary, but it gives you something to do while you're, you're enjoying that beautiful yeah. show. Well, you can also go over to earthsky.org and get some night sky charts that John Goss makes for us and that Marcy has introduces in her in her wonderful stories and you can go outside and use your binoculars to look at that stuff too or just your plain old unaided eye those do great for night sky are you ready for another slide yes okay um, um more video and, and what do we got as i just mentioned you know a good reason to maybe have your binoculars with you during totality, and this is a sequence, as you notice that moon is getting darker and darker and the sky is lighting up, you're starting to see stars pop into view. So we've got the Pleiades there, Cassiopeia, Orion is showing up, the um, Hyades. So um, during an eclipse, the sky does get dark enough that you can see even some of the dimmer stars. That's and true. Our, our next slide actually shows where to look for this particular eclipse. Okay, there you go. The moon is going to be halfway between Regulus and Leo and Spica and Virgo. And the real bright star Arcturus is going to be higher in the sky. And of course, at the same time, look around. Um, brilliant Jupiter is going to be up there. Uh, reddish Mars is going to be in Gemini. So you're going to be seeing like Orion and a lot of bright stars. So uh, yeah. be sure and look around during totality to see what you can see. And um, Jan Curtis, uh, who provided us with those uh, e eclipse videos, also sh sent me this picture. This was on the right, three minutes before the end of totality, and he caught a bright meteor. 
beautiful and so you can see dark sky things even during a full moon during an eclipse yeah it's and there's going to be things like that beautiful image that jan gave us that are just pure luck you got to right. be ready for them when they happen and right. thank jan for us would you for sharing all of this I, wonderful I footage and video and imagery yes okay is that all you had for us that's Marcy? all i have today dave okay well if you stuck it out this far, now you get the special portion, the, the secret special portion. We're going to talk about a thing that happens during every lunar eclipse, but only if you're in the right spot do you get to see it. And what I am talking about is this guy right here. It's kind of hard to see in this image, but that is that is the totally eclipsed moon in Minneapolis, Minnesota back, I believe it was 2014. In any case, that is the fully eclipsed full moon sitting on the horizon. Now, that should be physically impossible. That shouldn't be able to happen because syzygy, that's the three things lined up in a row that I talked about earlier. And it just means that the sun is here, the earth is in the middle, and the moon is over there. But we're on a globe, and that means we shouldn't be able to see anything below the globe, but there it is. And you can see it if you're in the right spot. What's going on is this, and that's way too complicated for me to explain right now. So pause that and go back later on if you're really that interested. But what's happening here in this more simplicated, simplicated, simplified uh, image is that you can see that the moon and the sun are in fact below the horizon, but atmospheric lensing at at the at the joint time of moonrise sunset thing atmospheric lensing will bend that light around the earth and you can see both at once this is an impossible thing to do and you can do it if and only if you're in the right spot well where is that spot well for this eclipse you're going to have to be in regions u3 or u2 so on the western edge of africa maybe in western europe or over in australia it looks like the siberian peninsula will get a bit of it so if you happen to be lucky enough to be in one of those spots you might get to see something that very few people have witnessed a selenian and that's a fancy word for sun and moon that's all that means and so what about afterward? What do we, what do you expect after? Well, the lunar eclipse is going to play out, you know, the penumbral shadow will start and the umbra will come along. We'll get the totality in this beautiful picture from Caitlin Moore, Madison, Wisconsin, taken during the last full lunar eclipse um, in, in the United States. So what happens after the whole thing reverses? We all go completely backwards through that cycle of the penumbra coming in. Now it goes out. And then it returns to a normal night. So it's worth watching. That's what will happen. And if you miss it or you can't see it, there will be, if you check on earthsky.org for our article, which is linked in the comments below, you'll find that there are live streams you can watch. And you can always stick around until September when there will be another full lunar eclipse. Unfortunately, if you want to see that one, you're going to have to be somewhere on the Central Asian Plateau or maybe down in India or the Indian Ocean. Anyway, folks, I think that's that's about wraps it up for us. Um, I'm going to thank you all. And I want to thank Jeremiah, my producer. And I want to thank Marcy for giving us this great information and Jan for providing the imagery and all of our other uh, Earth Sky photo contributors. And I especially want to thank you guys for tuning in and sticking around. Give us a like if you got anything out of this please subscribe to the channel and come visit us over at earthsky.org. We'd love to have you anytime. Thanks again, folks. See you next time.